I'm Tanya and um, I'm from Waikato University. So I'm just going to take you through some general information now about New Zealand and about Waikato University, um, including some information about how New Zealand has handled um, the current situation um, and also some information about how the university has um, handled the situation as well and, and some of the um, some of the uh, services that we've put in place for our international students who are on the campus at the moment and facing this difficult situation. So um, as you can see here, we've got the um, Waikato University campus. Um, this is just a small snapshot of our campus. So um, it's a very large campus. It's actually the largest university campus in New Zealand um, at a roughly 70 hectares. So we are a very, very large campus. We also have a campus over in um, one of our close cities in Tauranga, um, where there's a, a smaller group of students, but a, um, a new campus that I'll talk to you a little bit about. Um, later. So just a little bit of information about where we are. Um, Hamilton is about an hour and a half south of um, New Zealand's largest city. We're actually, um, it usually takes a roughly an hour and a half from the Auckland airport to reach Hamilton. Um, and you can see there, there's Tauranga is um, fairly close. It's about an hour and away from Hamilton. And there's also Rotorua down there, which is fairly, um, fairly famous for it. It's um, thermal, um, thermal activity and volcanic activity. So I'll just give you some information about what New Zealand has been doing over the last month or so around the coronavirus um, situation. So New Zealand's response to the COVID-19 crisis has meant that it is now one of the safest countries in the world. Um, so We've carried out over 200,000 tests and at present um, we're carrying out roughly over 5,000 tests a day, which is really quite, is considerably larger than many other countries um, of a similar population size or, or larger population size. Um, so we are really getting quite a good accurate picture of the number of cases in New Zealand at the moment. At the moment, or this, uh, I put together this slide a few days ago, and as of then, um, there were fewer than 1,200 confirmed cases. So those are the number of actual, um, actual active cases in New Zealand, or, or cases that had been confirmed. Sorry, not not necessarily active, because this would include cases that are both active, but also um, where people have no longer have the virus. Um, at the moment, so for the last two days, there have been zero cases um, of COVID-19 in New Zealand. Um, and prior to that, we were in signal, single digit daily cases um, where we were having also a few days of zero cases. So the, the well, so New Zealand has really got its, um, got its cases of COVID-19 under control now. Um, and we also, um, I mean, I know this sounds a little bit morbid, but, um, and, and really, you, you know, you don't really want to talk about having any deaths at all, but New Zealand only had 21 deaths in total um, during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and of those, all of those deaths were of people who are in the 60 years of age um, bracket. So really a very, very small number of cases that actually were fatal. So in terms of what the university has done for students while it is in, um, while we were going through this crisis, when New Zealand went into the lockdown level four, um, which was in um, April, Waikato University transitioned all of its teaching, including lectures, tutorials, workshops, to online platforms. Um, so students were, um, needed to leave the campus. Um, they had a day to get everything that they needed from the campus, um, and then they were uh, required to work from home. 
Um, the university staff contacted all students by telephone um, and followed up on any issues they had. We made over 10,000 phone calls to international students um, and domestic students and over 80% of those students were identified as low risk. So the university actually phoned students and then followed up on any issues that they had either by text or email. Um, so that was quite a considerable effort on the part of the university and university staff. Um, any student who didn't have access to a laptop was provided with a loan Chromebook for use until the end of the year. Um, so nobody who was not, um, did not have their own laptop was left out. Um, and there were other virtual services which were offered during that time, including virtual learning support hub, where students could book one-on-one -on -one sessions um, and uh, with tutors. There's, there was also a free online platform for all undergraduate and taught postgraduate students available 24-7, um, where students had access to additional writing support. Um, and there were also regular updates from the university's vice chancellor um, and also regular updates on Facebook as well as a student newsletter that was going out um, every week. So we did very, um, we did put a lot of effort into making sure that although students were not actually on campus, they were still um, very much included in all of the information that that we could provide. Um, they were kept up to date with the situation as it happened. They were kept up to date with information about the services that they could access. Um, and they also had someone to call if if they weren't um, feeling too good or if they were um, struggling with the online learning facilities, if they were having any technical issues, um, if they were even struggling with their course content, they had someone, just one person that they had uh, direct contact with who they could call at any time, um, who, was a, who had been a case manager that was assigned to them. So, um, so we did provide students with a, a really strong level of pastoral care. So in terms of um, what we're doing at the moment, so as of last Thursday, New Zealand um, went into level two lockdown. Um, so we're still not out of the woods yet and, and being um, typical Kiwis, we really need to, uh, we need to be, we're always very conservative about this kind of thing. And it's, you know, it's, ne it's never enough. So we always need to make sure that we're providing um, the best level of care so students who students who are on uh, at the university or, or studying with the university will continue to work remotely until the end of a trimester the university is now open including the student center which is the library so that is open at the moment um, and study spaces are available for students who need some quiet um, study uh, a quiet study environment um, and we're slowly moving staff back onto the campus. So there are social distancing and hygiene measures in place, hand sanitizers everywhere, a limit on the number of people that can be in the building at any one time and we're also implementing um, contact tracing measures um, such as QR codes that um, staff and students need to use if they want to enter a building, they need to use their phone to um, check in using a QR code. <clears throat> 